Welcome back to another episode of From the Workshop. I'm your host, Brandon Hart. And this time, we're gonna talk about the differences between LTEM and NB-IoT. Hello, friends. It's your host, Brandon Hart. And yes, like I said, we're gonna talk about the differences between LTEM and NB-IoT. These are two super awesome protocols, technologies, categories of LTE, something that are used for uh, these low power IoT devices. Uh, sort of collectively, this low power radio uh, technology categorization, <laughs> I'm throwing a lot of words out there, uh, is basically called uh, LP WAN or low power wide area networking. Um, and the 3GPP standards body has defined the categories of LTE in release 13 specifically LTEM and NB-IoT were introduced um, as technologies that will compete with some of the other stuff you may have heard uh, Sigfox, Ingenue, uh, LoRaWAN, those other things are all LP-WAN technologies as well but LTEM and NB-IoT are 3GPP technologies. Okay, what does all that mean? How do you differentiate between the two? If they're both LTE based, why would you pick one versus another one? I'll tell you why. Um, so, they are designed for different use cases. I'm just gonna say that right off the top. They are designed for different use cases. And uh, essentially the way that they work is, um, you know what, let's turn to the whiteboard. Uh, I need a chart. Right on, so there is our chart. So what we're gonna do here is in our comparison of LTEM and NB-IoT, we're gonna kind of give it a letter grade. We're going back to elementary school. Do they still do that, letter grades? M middle school, M high school. We'll do high school. Um, and we will give uh, each one of these characteristics a letter grade and uh, oh I don't know just for fun let's do it in blue so first off everything between LTEM and NB-IoT is based on as far as the differences and what you would use is all based on use case I think we mentioned that already but um, whether you use LTEM or you use NB-IoT all boils down to how your device is going to be deployed and what it's going to be doing how often it's going to talk things like that uh, should be noted, LTEM pretty much applies to all use cases in the LP WAN type of world. Um, so if you can tolerate the 300 kilobit per second ish throughput speeds, um, then whether you use LTEM or NB-IoT won't really matter. NB-IoT really works for just a subset of the same use cases that LTEM works for. I think you'll see that here as we work through this. Okay, mobility. Mobility is probably one of the main drivers for whether you use LTEM or NB-IoT. Um, LTEM gets a uh, B for mobility. And I give it a B, not an A, because um, LTEM actually works better if it's not mobile. If it's stationary, it's able to more quickly establish its connections and so on. So it would actually prefer to be stationary, but it works quite well mobile as well. Uh, NB-IoT gets a D for mobility. Um, I give it a D because NB-IoT does not want to be mobile. It does not like being mobile. It's not cool with being mobile. Um, the whole way that NB-IoT works is it initially, with the first time you fire it up, the, it does the normal network scanning, it finds an eNode B, it registers with the network, and then the network and the device both save that registration state and never plan to do it again, ever. And so in a perfect world, the NB-IoT device would only ever do that one time and never do it again, as long as it exists. It can do it again if it's forced to do it again. So if it moves and the next time it wakes up, it's not able to see that same e B, it can be forced to do that rescanning and all that kind of stuff again. But quite frankly, if you do that, you lose a lot of the benefit of MBIOT in the first place. You might as well be using an LTEM device that's already got that built into it because um, you're not saving power by going NB-IoT at that point. So not an F, 
it can handle mobility. It just, there's no point. Uh, if you make it mobile, might as well use it, be using LTE M. Okay, really the kind of the killer feature, and here we go. The killer feature there for all of these, again, we're talking about low power, wide area networking. Power is a pretty big deal. LTE M is extremely good. Um, LTE M gets, a, gets an A. It's very, very low power especially given the flexibility and everything, the throughput it's got. But NVIOT gets an A plus. It's that good. Um, so NVIOT is super, super low power. And again, we kind of talked about the registration state. It eliminates a lot of the overhead. It eliminates a lot of the uh, things that take more, more power. One of those main things being the time in which that radio is on. Remember that all of these are LTE radios, whether they're LTE M or NVIOT, they're based on LTE. When an LTE radio is in that high power transmitting state, when it's actively sending data, it's a high power radio. The, the way in which these things are generally considered to be low power is when they are not actively transmitting, how quickly can you get them into a low power state? How low power can they get into when they're not transmitting? and how fast can you move them from a transmitting state to a low power state. That's how this all, this all works. NBIOT, you can do that super, super fast. LTEM, you can do it pretty fast, but not quite as fast as NBIOT because of the extra mobility and the overhead associated with it. Speed, you can kind of look at that. I don't know quite how to assign a letter grade to this, but um, LTEM, you know, it gets a, it gets a C for speed. It's not fast. It's not meant to be fast. So it gets a, but it's pretty good compared to a lot of other low power wide area networking radio protocols. So still pretty good, but it's not fast. So it gets a C. NBIOT is really very slow. Um, again, I'm gonna give it a D. It is not unusably slow. It doesn't get an F, it doesn't fail. Um, but it is extremely slow. Just to give you an idea, rough figures here, speed, and, and I'm not gonna use exact numbers and things like that, um, but you know, the theoretical numbers put LTE M or somewhere around 300 kilobits per second. Um, NBIOT is somewhere around 50 kilobits per second. So that's the scale at which they are different speeds. Um, this is also the, the same reason why use case is so important when you're comparing the two. Again, an NBIOT device is only meant for sending very, very small bits of data, very occasionally, and in a stationary situation. So what happens if you try to send a bigger chunk of data through it? Let's say you try to send one megabyte of data through an LTE M device versus an NBIOT device. That LTE M device has a decent enough speed that it's not gonna take that long to send one megabyte file through that connection. It's a little bit more than you probably should be sending through LTE M, but it can handle it, no big deal. NBIOT with that 50 kilobit per second speed, that throughput is so slow that this device is going to have to be on for quite a long time to be able to send all of that data. Guess what? The longer it's on, the more it's in that higher power state, and the more power it's ultimately gonna utilize. In a situation like that, an NBIOT device actually uses more power than an LTE M device because it has to be on in that high power state for so long in order to be able to send that data. So again, it's all use case. You have a very small amount of data you're sending fairly uh, infrequently and you have a stationary device, NBIOT could be your best friend. All right, let's talk about latency. Um, in latency, I don't know, I'm gonna give LTE M a B. It's definitely not real time, um, but for the use cases, the latency is very, very manageable uh, on an LTE M device. Uh, again, wouldn't rely on real time communication, wouldn't uh, put a situation like this where somebody's life is at risk if the message didn't get through, um, but it's decent. Latency for an NBIOT device is not so hot. Um, I hate to do it, but I almost, I, I think I need to give it another D. Um, latency is not a great situation for NBIOT. 
Uh, these things can take a very, 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 very long time to get their data through the network. Now, the good news here is it's latency. So it's, it can, we can wake up, it can send the data, it can go back to sleep again. The, the data itself making its way through the network may take some time, given the architecture of how these things are typically set up. Um, the other thing I'll mention here is sometimes NBIoT can be set up in a non-IP manner. So it allows for non-IP uh, situations, whereas LTEM is all typically straight up IP um, every single time. So the non-IP can allow for um, removal of a lot of that overhead and, and uh, improving your battery life even better. Um, and sometimes that type of translation, that encapsulation and, and re, uh, repackagization as IP data um, can actually add some time, add some latency, um, lower the speeds, that kind of stuff as well, depending upon how that's actually eventually deployed. We're not seeing that in the real world yet, but it's coming. Um, I'm gonna give uh, NBIOT a C here because we're actually seeing it a lot faster than I kind of expected to. Uh, we've got US carriers, Verizon and T-Mobile stating that they're gonna have it on by the end of this year. Uh, AT&T is saying 2019, I believe. Um, uh, these are all public announcements that have been made in the past couple of months. Um, a lot of the carriers throughout Europe and, and several other parts of the world are stating that they'll go NBIOT first and are actively building that out right now. Um, it's not quite as available as LTE M seems to be, but NBIOT is definitely coming. It's coming to a network near you very, very shortly. Uh, so I'm going to give it a C. So hopefully this is kind of a, a nice at a glance comparison of the two. Again, anything that NBIOT works for, LTE M works for as well. NBIOT might just work a little bit better for certain scenarios where you've got a stationary device sending data seldomly um, and sending very little bits of data each time. Um, NBIOT can be a really nice choice for that. I hope this run through is helpful. Um, again, of these, these two technologies are uh, being thrown around a lot. They're buzzwords these days, but not a lot of, is understood about the advantages of one versus another and how they differ. So um, hopefully this run through helps with that. If so, please give it the video a like. Uh, please subscribe for more videos, of course. Ring the, the bells and all that kind of thing. Uh, feel free to leave comments down below. And uh, if you've got suggestions for future videos or just want to give us some feedback on this one, you can always shoot us an email at workshop at nimblelink.com. But until then, thank you much, very much for watching. Um, we will see you on the next From the Workshop video. And until then, have fun building.